All right, here we are back on the um, Pro Comp 190 Stage 4s for um, Peter and John in Denmark. And the next part I was wanting to show, I got this up on the board here for some of you guys that are DIY. And, and not only that, but some of the customers that send me their stuff, I want to take a minute to go over something with you. What I've got here is the Felpro Chevrolet gasket sizes, the most popular on exhaust and on intake, along with the plate. And the reason I wanted to get this up here is I wanted to show you all some dimensions. Now, when uh, I believe it was John that had called me up about doing this, um, I asked him about his headers, and since they're over in, in Denmark, uh, they purchased the headers from a company here, I'm not sure, Summit or um, maybe it was KMJ, somebody. I told him, I said, you know, if I had the headers here, it would help me on the decision of the exhaust side. And I'll tell you why. These headers, if you'll notice, I've already got them dockumed in. They have a buildup on them, probably about, I don't know, 100,000 thick. And although it looks like there's some me, I can assure you that you better watch what you're doing with a porting tool because you will tear these things up in a heartbeat. They're real thin. Uh, I believe these are 18 gauge. If I'm not, please excuse me. They're either 16 or 18. Doug Thorley used to build. I don't know what they're doing nowadays, but when I worked for Hooker Headers, uh, they were about the most best constructed production header I've ever seen. They, I believe they were made out of 14 gauge steel. I'm pretty sure 14 or 16, but they were thicker than hookers. Yeah, they were a little bit heavier and their flanges were a lot thicker. They were a, a, a heavier duty build header. But anyway, regardless, the best you can try to do is take the, the gasket that best fits what you've got on the flange and all you could do is break the edges take any of the little bumps out and just barely break the edge so that when the exhaust gas has come out it don't hit a total brick wall um, you can just about forget going in there and porting the thing to where it matches unless you take the header which is what we used to do at Hooker on our competition jobs and we would take brass and take a, a saline oxygen torch and build a brass bead all the way around, a good thick one around the flanges go in here as far as we could go all the way around and build that brass up that would enable us, if you still couldn't go crazy on it but you could dig a little bit more meat out of it and uh, of course after you do that now and I've seen them right out of the box from the best hooker whatever we take the header and we put it on a belt sander like this and kiss off on it and you just would not believe how many of these headers right out of the box are warped right in the center where they build the meat up on them and I try to tell people you know they they, they bolt them on and they go well, hey, I've got header leaks, and most of the time it ain't what they're doing wrong. It's fact that these tubes, when they build this meat up on them, they get them hot, and then they just don't go back and kiss off on them. So I try to tell people, hey, if you really want to make sure that you're not getting any header leaks, even if you're not going to weld the brass ring, go in there to a local machine shop, have them kiss off on this on a belt sander, and make sure it's straight, and you would really be shocked and how bad these things can be warped in the center on all of them. So, uh, by him sending me this, what it enabled me to do is pick the gasket that's going to be closest to representing the shape. Now, something uh, drawing this up on the board, I never realized. I knew they were close. I didn't know how close. This is the 1404 Felpro, which has a width and length of exactly 15 and 15. Uh, the 1405 I knew was a little bigger. I wasn't sure. Turns out it's just 30 thousandths bigger on both parts of the squares. 
So its length and width came in at 1530 and 1530, which is just 30,000 more width, 30,000 more height, split it in the center, 15 on each side, 15 on each side there. The real game changer has to be the 1406, which is a little bit wider by 10,000 some of the width, but in order to get that covered wagon shape, which there's a thing about that, 1.630. Man, it's a full hundred thousandths taller. Um, if I had to say the header tube size that I would shoot at this, I wouldn't use anything less than a one and three quarter tube on any of them. With this one right here, I would probably be leaning more toward a one and seven eighths or two inch platform. Uh, there's a couple of companies out there that make the one and seven eighths without a subplate. Uh, there's not many of them, but uh, then you get into the subplate flange, but that's uh, that thing rock and rolls. It allows you to put a real two inch tube header. But now here's something to think about. And this is general purpose GP. On the street, one and three quarter tubes with a closed exhaust system, even a three inch can. Carrying it out all the way out the back, three inch flow master, or even two and a half. That's about all you're going to really be able to make work because remember, you've got a closed exhaust. I mean, if you went to a one and seven eighths tube and you had three inch two chambers out the back, which is pretty close to running straight headers, it sounds cool as hell. Uh, yeah, you might gain a little bit on it, but doing dyno tests we've seen over the years, tube diameter is more important overall than tube length. I found that out a long time ago. The diameter means a lot more than equalization, although I'm not taking nothing away from equal tube length. It is very important. But on a mass-produced header, man, it's just hard to get that. Um, if you're really going to get a set of these, they're absolutely the way to go is going to be a step header where it steps from one and three quarter, one and seven eighths to two. So that as remember as the gases leave the exhaust port and they're coming out they start to cool down. Hot gases travel faster than cool gases so you need to go to the bigger diameter too. If you could somehow do a thermal map on it uh, you would absolutely see where it would need to have the increase in tube diameter to make up for the slower speed of the temperatures it's going down. One of the old hot rodder tricks from years ago is they used to take a collector, you know, that went on the um, back part and they'd get them in 20 inches long and they'd take a marker from what I was told and they'd mark around it and look to where, you know, it looked like the marker was starting to burn and then they'd saw it off. They'd start sawing it over. Now this took two sets of collectors because what you did is you started doing ETs and sawing the collector off until it started to go slower and then you'd mark it, go back and cut the collector right where it was at. But I've heard all kinds of tricks that the, that the old timers used to do playing with that collector length. I don't want to get sidetracked on that. But anyway, um, back on this deal here, it looks to me like I'm going to go with 1404. I'm going to get you a close-up shot and so show you why, because I can't make this header tube right here fit that. I can do some blending and, and bring it in where it won't be so brutal, but it's just too much to take out. Now, on the same lick, we got another situation. They went with the Elderbrock dual plane manifold. It's this new one they come out with, the EPS, Performer EPS. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing hood clearance was a problem. And uh, there's no way I'm going to get a 1206 shape out of this port. It, it's just impossible. It can't be done. And it don't have to be. Because what I can do is I can combine dimensions. I can go a 1206 on the width, side to side, and I can probably get real close to making that a true statement. And then 1205 on the roof. Because I'm using a 1206 gasket, 
it's still going to grab and seal up in here, but I won't be thinning this out so much on the roof that it's going to hurt the integrity of the manifold or, or even bust through. So like I said, we're going to be using a combination gaskets. I'll show you more deeply once we get into it. But this is going to be a 1206-1205 deal here. And uh, then we're going to go 1404 on the header. Because he sent me the header and gave me the exhaust gasket to lay on top of it, that helped me to pick the best shape that I could get for both John and Peter on their cars. It's going to interface with their Pro Comp head so that we don't hit any turbulent walls. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, now I'm going to bring the camera around and get you some close-up specs here at the different dimensions on the gaskets of what you work with on the small block Chevrolet. Okay. Notice our width, like I said, is square at 1500-1500 on the 1404. At 1405, we got 1530 and 1530 square. On 1406, we get two things. Number one, the covered wagon shape, which this is done as a high pressure thing. I think y'all might remember uh, the famed D-Port aluminum Corvette heads from back in the day. I think it was 85 or 86 when they st first started the tomb port fuel injection on the vets. They had the D-port heads and it's, it's also slang known as covered wagon port because it looks like a covered wagon from the 1800s. This is done because there's a high pressure area on the roof and low pressure on the bottom of the port. By making that shape in a covered wagon, they're getting a lot better velocity than what they are with an overall squared dimension shape, which is volume. Uh, so they went and gave it a little more height, but tuned the ends, trying to channel the air, uh, making more of the higher pressure air reach at the top. So the covered wagon, even a lot of the state of the art heads right now are using that shape. And 1406, especially the LT1 guys, it has a covered wagon port or D-shaped port right out of the factory, but it's a little bitty thing, and I do 1406 to enhance it. All right, now over here on the intake side, if you ask me which one, hands down, that I use more than anything else on both stage three and stage four, 1205. I've done more of them than anything else except for the Pontiac stuff. I used to fool with that quite a bit many years ago. The 1205 Chevrolet has a 1250 width by 2060 length or height. And to be honest, William, you're never going to see this number because you can't get that. You will bust through the push rod. The, the best number that you can hope to get on any head that does not have the offset rocker arms and material welded off, you're looking at a 1.120. That is the best width. So right out, the width is over a hundred thousandths bigger than what it can get. But now on the roof, um, most of the time it's feasible to get like a 2 100 and on your performance aluminum heads, I've actually gotten this to be a true statement, 2200. So height you can manipulate, but you are not going to break at 1.120. Uh, you might get a 30 if you bust through and then have to put epoxy on each side of it, put the head on the block, and go in there with uh, uh, your blender and blend until you get the push rod, which I've done that quite a bit, just hunting for every little bit a width that I can possibly get. Uh, so actually, the, you can't even make the blue stripe felt pro gasket, the crap one that comes out of the box, it's like a 1.150 I do believe. So, you know, it looks big when you set it on there, but when you go 900,000 in, where well, that push rod is, it next day. Yeah, the, the, the push rod is, uh, at 900,000 in, I mean, it's just, it comes down. Most of the factory heads are around uh, 0.800. So I'm moving sometimes almost as much of a quarter inch to clear that path. I call it a governor because it actually dictates the beginning speed of the runner and starts slowing down as it gets bigger, of course, to make that turn. 
So keep that in mind. It ain't you look at a gasket scribed on a head in a port, it's one of the oldest porting tricks in the world. A lot of these shops, they're pretty ruthless about that. They'll have this great big port and it'll look all big, but if you go down in there, uh, almost an inch, 0.900, it just necks right down. I call it funneling is my nickname for it. And uh, that's pretty much what it is. So anyway, just wanted to go over. And of course, the Felpro, excuse me, the, the Felpro plate, uh, it's identical to the 1206 right here. The only difference is on the inside flange, it's 50,000 smaller where it connects to the manifold with your locking plates right here so that it makes that manifold square just a little bit smaller to allow for alignment back and forth and up and down. It's just the coolest thing it is. I've got it for 1206 and uh, that's what they do with it. So I just want to go over your basic size and shapes and now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the header uh, inscribe that in on, on John and Peter's uh, Pro Comp head. So that's all right now. Before I got knee deep into this, I just wanted to go over the shapes. Why I asked some customers to send me a header and, you know, unless they can measure it out and tell what they got. In this case, they bought the headers here so they couldn't put a mic on it and measure it. And that let me pick the print that I'm going to put on it, which uh, is going to 1404. And I told you what I was going to do on the manifold, make it a 1205-1206 split. All right, so we're off and running. 